I'm starting a new series today. And to this month, I have declared this month as a family-centeredness. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to talk about family matters. We're going to talk about relationship. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. So today, I'm going to start that the subtitle of this series is God's Plan for the Family. Talking about the plan, I'm talking about the blueprint of God blueprint of God. The plans that God has set for the family to live. It's a year of victory and I believe that even in our families we need to experience the victory of God in our family. Hallelujah. Amen. In our relationship we need to experience the victory of God in our relationships. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want us to open your Bible to Colossians chapter number 3 verse 18 to 21 God's word, word translation God's word translation Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to 21. Colossians chapter 3. Are you there yet? Colossians is in the Old Testament. So, Priscilla, I see you open the New Testament. So, good. It's in the Old Test New Testament. So, you're fine. Amen. Hallelujah. Mama, you're welcome. Amen. That is... Deacon Edwin's mother-in-law. Those of you who don't know her. After church, greet her. Amen. Amen. Are you there yet? Let's go. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to 21. God's word translation. Wives, place yourselves under your husband's authority. This is appropriate behavior for the Lord's people. Husbands, love your wives. And don't be harsh with them. Children, always obey your parents. This is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, don't make your children resentful, or they will become discouraged. Amen. Amen. So, as you can tell, Apostle Paul was able to put all of the, um, the groups together. I was surprised that this particular place, he started with the women. So today, I'm going to start with the women. Will all the women clap for yourselves. Amen. Amen. Today is going to be, let, let me warn you before I start, because today is going to be a little bit rough. But I don't mean to be bad. I just want you to know the truth. Amen. Amen. I told the people um, in Lawton last Wednesday, there was some... Um, um, point that we were talking about, say, don't worry, I'm starting a new series, so it will be in there. Hallelujah. Amen. So, fast in your seatbelt. Amen. Amen. If you decide to build a house, the first thing you need to get, or after getting all the money, gathering all the money that you need to build a house, the, the, the thing that you need is an architect. And when you find that architect, you will ask him or you will tell him the kind of building that you need. I remember those days in Ghana, the time that we were doing this kind of job. Someone will come to you and say, um, I want a building like um, Kojumenu's building. And when you look at Kojumenu's building, it's a very huge building. And this person have a half plot. And Koju Menu's building is two and a half plot with all the stuff he has on it. And sometimes this is what we think everyone's situation or whatever this A, group A is going through in their life. That is how we also need to live our life. I didn't put it well. Let me try it again. Sometimes we think that if this one is having everything together in, his, in her life and uh, in her marriage. You also have to get everything together like that. Are you, did I get it right? Yeah. Okay. But it's not like that. You need to see the architect for the architect to show you what you need and what can help you to build your house on that particular plot that you have. Did I, did I get it right? Yeah. Okay. 
All right. I don't want to lose you today because this thing that I'm sharing with you, I want you to get it. So, if you find an architect, the architect will come up with all kinds of drawings. At the end of his plan, I mean the design, it will come up with all kinds of drawings. And drawings, you can find foundation drawing or foundation plan, if you will. Foundation plan, let me put a plan. Foundation plan, um, ground floor plan, roof plan, um, um, isometric view or perspective plan. And then the details. All the detailed plans will be added to it. Now, after the perspective plan and all the drawings that you have, the most important thing or the one that makes the client look so happy or make them so happy is the perspective and the isometric view. Because for that one, he will be able to see how the building will look like. So when they are looking at the floor plan, it looks like... Um, something that it doesn't make sense to the person but when the person look at the isometric view or the perspective plan it looks like oh this is a nice house sometimes for you to get to that level you need to work on the floor plan before you get to it it looks like you don't understand can you put my drawings on the screen so i can be able to explain things to my wonderful people here okay so when you look at the screen the first one on the top is the floor plan. And this one is isometric view. Now, on the isometric view, you will be able to see the back of the house and one side of the house and also the top of the house. That is us. So when you see this, this looks so beautiful. It looks so, oh, my house will be nice. But for you to get this house over here, you need to start work yourself from the plan. Do you get that? Yeah. Now, on the plan, you can see there's two windows. All the Can you see from the screen here? You can see two windows all the way at the back over there. That two windows is over here on the screen here. Now, if you decide that this is the plan that the architect has given me, and this is the asymmetric view. And on your uh, um, doing the construction, you decide that for me, I don't like those two windows. I would rather put the one window over there, or bay window over there. It will be a building, all right. But at the end of the day, it won't be the one that the architect gave you. I don't want to lose you. Did you get that piece? So. In the same way, our relationship, our marriage, our family, there is a plan that God wants us to follow. The, uh, the, 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 the asymmetric view and the perspective view of our life, of our family, of our, our relationship, our marriage, is the happiness and joy in the marriage. Everybody want happy. Everybody want to be happy in their marriage. Everybody want to see um, a relationship doing well in their life. Family getting along. Everything working for us. But for us to get to that happiness and all those enjoying moment and all the good stuff in the marriage, we need to first work on the plan. So, Apostle Paul was trying to get the Colossians to understand certain principles in life. If you are a Christian, there's a way you're supposed to live your life. And how you live your life is to, number one, according to Apostle Paul, you have to do good. He was trying to explain certain things like, a simple thing like, do good, love one another. But when he get to this particular place, he says, verse chapter 1, I'm sorry, 18. It says, wives, place yourselves under your husband's authority. This is appropriate behavior for the lost people. So that is my point number one. So my point number one is, wives, submit or place yourselves under your husband's 
authority. Why? Because this is appropriate behavior for the lost people. If you are a Christian or a believer, you cannot say for me, I will live anyhow in my marriage. After all, this man don't deserve my respect. He doesn't qualify for me to respect him. But if you behave that way, you are deviating from the plan that the architect has given you. The architect is God. And this is what God wants you to do as a wife. Today we're going to deal with only the women. Next week we will talk about the men. Now, if you're a wife here, make sure you get your husband here next week. Other than that, it won't be fair. <laughs> Hallelujah. So get them here next week for them to hear their part. But today we're going to deal with the women. Amen. So we're talking about submission over here. So in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22, the Amplified Bible says, Wives, be subject to your own husbands as a service to the Lord. I like the way Paul was explaining this in Ephesians than the, the um, Colossians 1. Over here, he, he's saying that you need to Submit to your own husband. I like the way uh, he put their own husband over there. What I'm trying to tell you is, some of you, it's easy for you to respect your bosses at work. You will get there and say, oh, can you give me some, uh, 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 a cup of coffee? Oh, I'm at your service. It will be right there with you. And the coffee will come. To your husband, you get home and say, "Oh, can you get me some a cup of water?" So you you are sitting there doing what, and you want a oh, pesumado do? You want me to get you some water for what? But your boss didn't even finish. Can you say, "Oh, that coffee, I will be right there." Hallelujah. Amen. Paul is saying, respect your own husband. Your own husband. Some of you respect pastors more than your husband. I'm a pastor, so if I'm saying it, I have to say it. Whatever the pastor would tell you to do, you will do. But when your husband tells you to do something, you will never do it. And sometimes your husband has to take you to the pastor for you to listen. Hallelujah. I already apologize that today is going to be a little bit rough. So forgive me. Amen. Amen. So it says, submit to your own husband. Why? Because it's a service unto who? The Lord. So whilst you are serving your husband, what God is saying is that you are serving God himself. If you refuse to serve that husband, you are not serving God. I like the way you are looking at me. I'm not feeling intimidated at all. <laughs> Listen, Akashi. <laughs> when I get home today, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> you have to make sure that whatever you are doing, you don't see it like you are doing it for that man. Because over here, the Bible is saying, when you are serving your husband, you are serving God. So you have to do it like this is what I am doing for my God. Do you know that Sarah was calling her husband Lord? Yeah. Those where I'm coming from, if you uh, um, if you go to the Church of Pentecost, not here. The here forget <laughs> where I'm coming from. When your husband called you, Mira, meaning my Lord. Here. You call your husband Kojo Menu. Hey, James, get that thing for me. Hey, hey, Maswa, get that thing for me. Ben, you look at your head. 
Hallelujah. You talk to your husband like you are talking to your firstborn. Amen. So let's look at this submission. So what I'm trying to say, or what I'm talking about here, is submission. The Greek word for submission is hupotasso. Hallelujah. Hupotasso. Now, that hupotasso, the meaning of hupotasso is to subordinate, put under. Hallelujah. Put under. To subordinate, put under. You are under your husband. So that word submission is two words together. Do you see that? Sub and mission. So, someone has a mission. And you are going to be under that mission. So, if you are under that mission, you have to humble yourself to be under that person's mission. Other than that, you cannot do it. It's not about you being a doormat. That is all what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying you don't have any say in your home. That is not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to tell you to allow that husband to, 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 to maltreat you or abuse you. That is not what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. If the husband is abusing you, then you need to do something about, about it. That is not what I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is God wants you to submit yourself to your husband because it is the word of God. Hallelujah. And when you do that, the dictionary also explained that is lower in rank or position. So in this case, we all have a position at home. But just that someone is the leader and someone is the subordinate. Do you get that? I, don't, I, don't, I know it. You guys don't like this. But forgive me. You have to submit to your husband's lead. Now, you can be a boss at your workplace. When you come home, you are not the boss at home. There is a boss at home. One time in the Bible, a woman decided to take the lead. It didn't go well. That is why we are here in this trouble. Eve decided I will talk to Satan and then convince you to eat the food that God has said you should not eat. And then that's it. Because at that time Eve was leading the house. The moment a woman became the leader of the house, it's a disaster. You cannot because that is not how God has made it. You can't. You have to allow the man to leave the house. I know what you are thinking. This guy won't say nothing. Even you talking about mission, he doesn't even have one. How can I follow such a person? But God did not say they have to have one before you follow them. All he has, all he's saying is just follow them. <laughs> this is why I, I like preaching because you can ask me questions. <laughs> if it's Sunday school, you ask me, Pastor, about this one. This time, just keep quiet. Let me talk. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So all God is saying is, whether your husband is good or not, just follow his lead. Amen. But the thing is, if it's contrary to the word of God, then you have to be careful. Amen. Amen. That one is clear. God exhort women to voluntarily follow their husband's leadership. Because if you don't, you are not helping your own self. Hallelujah. And some of you, instead of following that man, you keep talking, you keep pushing him. You, you try to change someone who has grown up to this time. You try to change him to become something else. It's not going to work by your words. So 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 says, In the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then, 
Even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will do what? Will speak. Your godly life will speak. Even if your, according to Paul, even if your husband is a wicked person, don't want to have anything to do with the word of God, don't want to even come to church, don't want to do, he said, all you need to do is stop talking and use your godly behavior at home. And then when you do that, that husband, he says, you will warn him with what? Your lifestyle. So the husband is wicked. The, he's treating you so bad. But the moment he comes, the food is there. Oh, can I help you do this? Oh, can I do this for you? Oh, can I? You will, I mean, threaten the man with your life. And at a point, he will ask you, what do you want from me? I don't want anything. I want you to be a good person. That's all I want. From. But you know what you do? The moment he gets home, you have already planned. Some of you, you even put it down on a sheet of paper. It's on your phone. All the stuff you're going to tell him already. So by the time he gets home, you are ready for him. And you go point by point. Boom. 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 I say, you are wasting your time. It will never change. Use your godly behavior to change that man. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I teaching good? Yes. Okay, great. Submission has become a very difficult thing for some women. Not all of you. You guys are, I'm talking about the one who live in this bush right here. Those people. It's so hard for them. You are fine. You are good. <laughs> but for you to understand what we are talking about, this scripture right here, um, according to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, to 25. You first need to understand verse 18. What is verse 18 is saying? Verse 18 says, do not get drunk in with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, and what? Stupidity. You said it, so you said I insulted you. <laughs> and what? Stupidity. And stupidity. <laughs> but feel with the Holy Spirit. Constantly guided by him. Now, you may think, why this scripture? Get, what does this scripture get to do with wives submitting their, to their husband and all that? What it's trying to tell you is, if you can submit to your husband, what you need to do is to allow yourself for Holy Spirit to dwell in you. You have to be a Holy Spirit. Listen, if when a woman comes to church and whatever you tell the woman, he doesn't, she doesn't do it and always trying to fight things in the church, that woman fight their husband at home. It's, it's just, that, that is what you have to un understand. The moment you see a woman in the church, everything they have something to say about, they want to fight about things, they fight their husbands at home. Because if you are a holy, I mean, spirit-filled person, Everything that you are doing will be guided by the Holy Spirit. So you don't just come out with stuff without processing because the Holy Spirit is guiding you. The reason why you talk to your husband anyhow is because the Holy Spirit is not guiding you. You are doing things anyhow because you are full of yourself. Amen. You are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you can allow I'll write this one down. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit and allow Him to guide you, then submission and loving will not be a problem. Including the man. Loving your wife that is so... We'll talk about it next week. Loving your wife that is so difficult, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it will be so easy to love that woman. Even if that woman does not respect you, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it will be easy to love that woman. Hallelujah. Amen. That one is next week. We'll talk about that next week. So, men, don't laugh too much because next week is your turn. And all of you, I will make sure you are here next week. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. 
The word of God makes us to understand that when submission becomes a trouble, we ourselves need to, I mean, try to work it out. Make sure that it is something that we are doing is not for man because it's a service unto God. Hallelujah. When we are, I mean, when, when we are serving those men, that husband is a service unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, for, um, let's see for Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 and 24. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 and 24 says, For the husband is the head of the wife. As Christ is, a head, is head of the church. Himself being the savior of the body. Verse 24. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives should do what? Be subject to your... Read it with me. Read it with me. To their husband. See, when you say it, it will be easy to do it. The church has submitted... I like the way you're laughing. The church is submitted to, their, uh, um, to, to Christ. So wives should submit or subjected themselves to their husband. Hallelujah. You see the way that when you are coming to church, you are so in a hurry to come to church. It's a good thing to do. You love God. But all these things without respecting your husband at home. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is a principal God. Whatever that we need. Next week I'll tell you guys, the men, some of you, your prayer has been, even been hindered. God has refused to hear your prayer. I will talk about it next week. Some of the blessings that you are not receiving is because you are not obeying simple instruction that God has given you. If you begin to serve that man and begin to do all the things that God is asking you to do in your home, the marriage will get better. Amen. All those fights will stop because they are not God. Listen to this. I said because they are not God. If you are doing your part that God has commanded you to do, God knows how he can get them to listen to you. Because they are not God. But the reason that they are not doing what you want them to do, because you are deviating from the plan that the architect has given you. Do, do you get that? You are not working with the plan. You have the plan all right, but you refuse. You are cutting corners. When the, you have to cut it straight, you cut it around. When you have to cut it around, you are cutting it straight. Because of time, you don't have time to do anything. And God is saying, you won't have the perspective, the isometric view, which is the happiness in your home. Hallelujah. Amen. Respect that man. Again, how can I respect someone who don't deserve my respect? How can I uh, respect or submit to someone who don't have what it takes? Hallelujah. Have you been in, um, in a traffic that there's a car in front of you before? And that car is not going anywhere. It's parked. It's parked in front of you. And you are behind that car. And what you are doing is just blowing your... And then you saying all kinds of things. Insulting that car. And the car is right there in front of you. All the noise that you are doing in your car is a waste of time. Because that car is parked. The only thing you need to do at that time is to get down from your car. And go and ask the driver, do you need some help? At that time, the only thing that drive, the driver need for the traffic to flow is someone who will help him to push that car aside. What you need to do to help that husband that you think is not doing anything is for you, is to you, for you to help that husband. Bible says you are his helpmate. 
say I will I will give you your own helper someone who will help you and that is your husband say for this a man will leave his father and mother and then join to his wife and then the wife will help the man and you are there instead of helping the man you are insulting the man it's not going to go anywhere it's a part car unless you get down and help the driver to push the car now if i'm helping someone to push a car i'm not the driver put that one in mind my job is to help him push his car your job as a woman is to help your husband fulfill his vision your job is your, um, for you to help your husband fulfill his goals. Hallelujah. You are not there to take the lead role. If you do that, it's not going to work. Hallelujah. Amen. I like the way you are quiet. That means you are listening. Mm -hmm. Write this one down. A godly wife promotes peace and brings encouraging words and does not tear down with her words. Some of you, your husband at this point, they are depressed. They cannot do anything because of your words. If he tried and they didn't work, the way you will say it, for me, I won't try anymore. So I'm done trying because of your words. Hallelujah. Now, talking about ways. It, this scripture is so interesting. The one I'm about to share with you. Let's read it because of time. Let's read it. That's my last scripture. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9. The Amplified Bible says, It is better to live in a corner of the top, of the housetop, on the flat roof. On the flat roof. Exposed to the weather. Watch this. What he's saying is. <laughs> let me continue. Exposed to the weather. Then in the house. Share with. A quarrelsome. Contentious. Contentious. Woman. Do you know who a colossal woman is? They can talk from morning to evening. The problem started in the morning. And then you decide to go to where you thought it's over. And on your way to where they will call you. We didn't finish what we were talking about. And then they will continue. Okay, I'm at work right now. I got to work. She knows your break time. She will call. I'm sure you are break. Let's continue. When you get home, she will continue. Bible says it's better for you to go live on top of the roof than to leave the home, the same place with that person. Because that person will kill you faster than on the rooftop. That is, that is what the scripture is saying. If you stay the same place with that person, he will kill you faster than the rooftop. The reason why some of you, see, the 66 traffic, sometimes it's not because there's a um, wreck or there's a construction. Some people just don't want to go home. <laughs> they don't. Because if they go home, there's a woman there who is going to start. So you would rather stay in the traffic than getting home early. It's better for you to stay at the rooftop. Now, how can you leave a home with your own husband and the person don't want to come home? Some of them, they will get home, but they will sit at the study room. They will sit on the computer like they are doing. They are not doing <laughs> nothing. They just don't want to have anything to do with you. So they will rather stay in the... They will go to the garage. They will clean everything in the garage. It's not because they want to work. They refuse to stay the same place with you. Hallelujah. I'm ending this today. Allow your own husband to enjoy their home. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
It is bad for you to behave like that as a Christian woman. It's not godly and it won't help you. And it's blocking your blessings because you are not following the plan that God has given you. If you follow that plan, you will have the end product, the happiness and the happy home that you want. Talking about, oh, my husband is boring. He don't want to share, talk to you. He, oh, it, no communication. Why do I talk to you? If I say one, you say 20. And everything you are right than me. I'll rather be quiet. Hallelujah. Take this from Uncle Dan. That this is a good advice. And it will help your marriage to succeed. Women, clap for me.